Proud of You is a parenting advice podcast and support group for dads hosted by Two Goofy Dads. They are not pediatricians, nutritionists, OBGYNs, psychologists, nor are they authorities on parenting. They're just two dinguses trying to figure it all out. Their advice should not be taken as expert information. Parenting looks different for everyone, and there's no wrong way to be a dad. Frankly, if you're taking the time to listen to a podcast about it, you're already doing a great job. And these dads are proud of you. Ladies and gentlemen, can I please have your attention? I've just been handed an urgent and horrifying news story. And I need all of you to stop what you're doing and listen. Welcome back. I'm Derek Mata. And I am Andrew Goody, and we are proud of you. Uh, welcome back to the podcast. This is a uh, a fun episode. We are going to talk about all things body training. Uh, I don't have a ton of experience with this because uh, my two year old is not yet body trained. We're working on it. We're 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 in we're in the, in the thick of battle as we speak. Um, and, and and I uh, <laughs> even though I have four kids under the age well i've raised four children up until the potty training age i have very limited experience for a, a bunch of different reasons that may or may not be brought up in later episodes for sure so have you guys started potty training ivy at all yet no, she's she's right about alana's age she, she is but we have not yet um because of plans in the near future it would hinder the i don't want to say it'll hinder those plans it'll it'll hinder the potty training um if we were to get to a certain point and then kind of revert back to try it again it's it's common enough again from what i understand it's common enough for kids to kind of revert and regress on their own you don't want to start the process and then two months later be like actually we're going to put this diaper on you because it's convenient for us now yeah exactly i mean and I want to say like that that sounds that that sounds bad. Hey, it's convenient for us, but like the, a lot of people will, will fall into that situation. Like, hey, we're going on a trip. It's a lot easier to throw the diaper on you than to stop every uh, with kids these days. Who knows? Every yeah. 15, 20 minutes, you know, an hour. Um, but well, and it just it it eliminates like. Uh... <laughs> no pun intended it eliminates some of the uh complications because like one of the biggest pieces of advice that i've gotten as we're going through this this you know uh transition phase here is like when you when you do away with diapers you just have to lean into the fact that like you're gonna have to clean some clothes you're gonna you're gonna have accidents you're gonna like kids are gonna poop on the floor it's gonna happen uh and that is hard enough to deal with at home. Uh, but if you're going on a trip or if you're going out of town or, you know, uh, if you're going to your aunt's house who always keeps the place immaculately clean, uh, like <laughs> it can Probably become, specific. <laughs> become uh, not, not for me. I'm just saying like, as an example, um, it can, it can become a real, a real hassle, you know? Um, so, so it is, I mean, it is a convenience factor for sure. So, so my question is because like, this is your your first yeah and and you obviously have differing views and like i do and probably like a a lot of parents so i'm just curious like what is your plan for for potty training alana so uh we we talked about it a lot and uh the biggest thing that we're doing is talking about it um there's a i don't know if it's one specific like author who coined the term or if it's just like a movement or whatever but there's there's an idea that emily brought to my attention called elimination communication um and basically it's just talking about the idea of going to the bathroom pooping and peeing with your kid way before you even start the process of actually like using a toilet um and so like we talked to her about like, oh, did you pee in your diaper? Did you poop in your diaper? Okay, we're going to change your diaper because we don't want to have poop on us. And like, we've had those conversations for, I mean, upwards of nine months now um, to kind of get her used to it. And so now she's at a point where 
she knows when she's peeing, she knows when she's pooping, which having those triggers for her makes it so much easier because now like sometimes she'll be like, dad, I got to poop and like go to the bathroom and like, she'll, she'll sit on, like we have a, a, it's a potty training toilet. It's, it's just a miniature version of a normal size toilet. It's not one of the like seat insert things. Um, and she'll like sit on her toilet and like with her diaper on go to the bathroom and then ask me to change her diaper. And so she's kind of leading that charge. Um, and to my understanding, which again, uh, I'm in the thick of it. So I have no idea what this process is actually going to look like long-term. It takes a little bit longer um, than, you know, uh, <laughs> ripping off the bandaid, if you will. Um, but, you know, it, it puts her in control and it kind of gives her some of, of the, um, it gives her the reins and, and lets her have some, some, autonomy, if you will, in the process and kind of pick when she doesn't want to wear diapers anymore, because that way the the hope is since she's the one who's choosing it, when she starts wearing, you know, underwear instead of diapers, we won't have those regressions where it's like, oh, nope, I'm a diaper baby again. Or like, I'm going to, I'm going to poop in my underpants because I want to, because I used to wear diapers and I want to wear diapers again, you know, like a, a lot of kids, again, the psychology behind it is, uh, I, I'm not an expert. Um, but if you, if you push a kid into, um, you know, potty training, they can revert because they feel forced. They feel like the choice was taken away from them and diapers were fine. Why can't I just wear a diaper and want to go backwards? Whereas if you talk about it and you have that communication, which, you know, is my whole bread and butter, man, talk, yeah. communicate, <laughs> like it, it's, it's more encouraging of them. Hey, they're making the choice. Like, Hey, I don't want to have poop on me. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to sit in wet pants if I pee myself. Right. So like she's making that choice. She's having those realizations and making that choice on her own. Um, it's much less likely that she'll feel forced into that situation because we're not forcing her. Right. She, she, it would be almost impossible for her to feel that way. And like, like Ivy knows when she she knows more when she poops than when she pees, but she does know when she needs a diaper change. Um, then you know they may be peeing in it a couple of times. Not like she pees once, handy to diaper change. But I think it also helps that like she watches Noah use the potty. Noah says, "Hey, I'm going potty." And she'll she's like, oh, okay. So he's going in there and she'll follow him. And so she sees. So I think it'll be a lot easier to potty train her. Yes. Um, Seeing I that know, example definitely it, helps. Exactly. I know like my oldest daughter, and I want to say she was four. Don't quote me on that one. But uh, I had custody of her over the summer and she wasn't fully potty trained. And I know one of the things that, that people say is not, not bribe your children, but like, and, and incentivize. So like the incentive for her is like, Hey, you like popsicles, you go to the potty, you get popsicles. And like within, I don't know, let's say two, a week to three weeks, she was fully potty trained um, to the point that she knew to play the system. I have to go potty. <laughs> and then yeah. we, you know, we wisen up to it too. Like, all right, you're not actually going, you just want a popsicle. Um, and you know april april potty trains noah like i i won't take any credit for it <laughs> at all because she is a she's a scheduled person she's like we are going to set a schedule kids go to bed you know that kind of thing kids go to bed eat at this time yada 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 yada, yada. like so noah's gonna go to the bathroom at this time this time this time this time this time to the point that like we still get up at 3 30 in the morning to take him to the bathroom so he he'll go most of the night you know, we, we keep pushing it with, I think it was 11 o'clock and then 12 o'clock and then like one 30 and now three 30. Um, but his whole thing is like, he just wanted to go. He just, he was proud to go. We didn't have to be like, and, and she'll correct me if I'm wrong. We didn't have to really bribe him with anything. He wanted to go to learn. Um, same kind of thing. Like, Hey, you don't want to have that pee on you. You don't want to have that poop on you. Um, we, I will say we did try a couple of things. I don't know if you've ever heard it of the let him run around without a diaper or underwear for a few days. It's what uh, I, the advice that is most often given for if you're struggling with it, just leave him naked, 
and note like commit to the fact that you're going to be cleaning up some some messes on the floor but uh from what i hear it works like and maybe that's what worked for noah because i know like he would walk around and then he'd be like like i peed and like your first your first reaction like no not pee on my floor but like (laughs) it's that that mental thing of oh oh no it's okay it's okay next time go to the potty so that 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 may have helped him too um i just feel like we tried a couple things i'm not really sure i couldn't i couldn't pinpoint it april probably could (laughs) um but yeah well and and all credit to the moms man uh emily's definitely taking point uh with with alana um you know i'm 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 here for the ride and i'm helping out but she is definitely leading the charge which a lot of it's just availability right i mean you and i both are are primarily for work out of the house or closed in an office for most of the day so you know there's there's 40 hours a week where i can't help with body training um the rest of the time i try to be there as much as i can but a lot of that she's either asleep or you know i get i get uh, a tenth of of her time yeah and it's um but yeah i mean same same thing that you said with ivy and noah like alana um both out of curiosity and because she's just a little velcro baby who wants to be stuck to our sides at all time <laughs> whenever i go to the bathroom uh like i she's she's right there and she just hangs out and it's actually it's it's uh really funny because i have uh, a lot of selfies not like weird inappropriate selfies but just selfies of us because her toilet uh <laughs> is like a way like we're facing each other in the bathroom right so like there's the 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 kids training potty right there facing the adult uh potty and so like i'll be sitting on the toilet she'll be sitting on the toilet and we'll like turn like this and take a picture and like send <laughs> we call them pooping selfies to mom <laughs> No, that I mean that that's funny though, because they, you know, as you know, my kids are you know attached to their mother. Yeah, like poor woman cannot go to the bathroom without without at least one of them. So I think I think as as weird as it is, because let I me mean, it it took me a while to be like you know my kids are there watching not watching me but like hey dad what are you doing like it was yeah. really weird for me at first especially with these younger two because they. Uh, you know i've been in their lives a lot longer than i have my other two so it's just like no this is my bathroom time but like now it's like <laughs> they're they're watching and they're learning from me yeah so um well just, especially i mean you're so, societally it's a thing right like the, that's a hide your shame uh <laughs> go do it in a, a closed off room and also just like nobody wants to watch anybody go to the bathroom <laughs> uh, but but like yeah, no, I can I can imagine, especially you're you're a pretty conservative uh guy to begin with. Having people see you just drop trow to begin with, to to yeah. start is probably uncomfortable for you. It, it 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 was very uncomfortable. And now just kind of like, you know what? Yeah. Like you're 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 your babies. Yeah. <laughs> like, you get used to it quick. Yeah. Um, but there's there's not a there's not a tried and true winning method. Like I like I said, my my oldest one was was she loved treats. Like that was her thing, was treats. The younger, the younger two will not be given treats, or Noah wasn't given treats. Ivy won't be given treats. It's a, it's that that praise, like you did a great job and I'm proud of you. Like keep doing what you're doing. Yeah, encouragement goes so far. And and you know, kids respond really well. And it, like you said, right? There's no, there's no, there's no one way to do it. Just like so many other things in parenting, there's there's not really a right way. There's the way that works for your kid, and that could be different for every kid. Um, but it, I I've found with a lot of gamifying things is like if I can turn a mundane activity into a game, it's immediately she's into it, like whatever it is, washing dishes, uh, sweeping the floor, like she loves it because it's a game. Um, and so we've talked about one of the families that, that Emily used to nanny for, um, before we had our own kids, um, she, she helped potty training their son and he had a potty train. Um, and it was this like printout of a train that every time he went potty, they put a sticker on it. And like, every time they completed a train car, he got like a special, I think it was like an actual train car. Like he had a, he had like a play train set and he'd like, whenever he got enough stickers to complete the, the, the thing, he would get like an actual train car or some kind of toy reward type of thing. And I could see, like, I could see that working really well. If Alana needs the extra incentive of like turn it into a game, right? She's, yeah. she has my completionist Pokemon gotta catch them all. <laughs> uh, like 
hell yeah, man, I'll get that sticker today. I'm going to go, I'm going to go pee in the potty because I want that sticker. <laughs> like, I mean, and, and that was like, not, I want a fucking train car too. <laughs> I'm going to go potty right now. <laughs> there you go. I, I will say oh. that um, having a boy, like you, you got to think, you watch all the movies, like potty training a boy, you put a Cheerio on the toilet, you have something for the, and then aim at. Yep. I will say the biggest thing that helped Noah was sitting down first. The, the Like, was there messes? Yes, there's messes. He's a boy. But it's the, I now know that the potty is a normal thing and then introducing him to standing up later. Um, so that is my recommendation for, for those of you with boys. Like, you don't have to start them standing up. And yes, you, you know, boys are supposed to stand when they pee. Like, okay cool like get Not to man. that like don't don't make it harder than it has to be by making them stand up while trying to teach them at the same time i also just don't understand that that hard line that people draw man that's the that's the weirdest hill to die on i'll sit down to pee i'm a 32 year old man you can't tell me how to pee <laughs> 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 apparently it's cleaner like or so i heard like it is just a, a cleaner yeah, way to pee. like you don't get it doesn't it doesn't everywhere. splash as much if you get a weird shiver up your spine, like happens sometimes, you don't shake and get messes. I, I don't, don't like know it. how many ghosts are in your house that you get weird shivers while you're taking pills. Uh, it's, it's just a weird, <laughs> broken old man spine that I have. Uh, but like, there's, uh, you know, no, it's it's that's not even an argument, man. Of course, it's cleaner. There's like, <laughs> I I mean, I I I don't sit down, and I know the majority of men don't sit down, but like, it just just to make it easier on yourself, trying to potty train. Hey boy, don't don't make it harder by being like aim for the Cheerio. Like, yes, is it a game? Sure, but like, let them just get comfortable peeing in this new environment that's not a plastic toilet or or a diaper. Yeah, totally. So, did you guys did you cloth diaper Noah? Mm -mm. I that was a, a stiff one. I never understood, like, I, I, I understand why people cloth diaper, but at the same time, I don't understand why, because it's like a cleanliness thing to me. Like, I can throw away a diet cloth, you know, a, a normal diaper, <laughs> but a cloth diaper, like, you, you wash them. Well, no, I understand you wash them, <laughs> but like, you, you're you not going to wash one cloth diaper by itself. You have to either have a load of laundry or wait till you have enough cloth diapers do you know how many diapers a kid goes through in a day, man? So like as reference, we've gone back and forth. We, we really, Emily was really big on cloth diapering. I'm sure you're surprised hippie family that we are like, <laughs> Wait, what? we, <laughs> we, we cloth diapered and it worked for a while. And then like Alana has really, really sensitive skin. Um, and so we were finding that she was just a little bit reactive to like, if she peed and like, and like, obviously, if she had a wet diaper, we were changing it. I don't want people to get yeah, yeah, weird yeah. about, like, leaving the kid in the diaper. But if she peed, like, a little bit where it was, like, not enough to really change it right away, but enough that it there was some pee in the diaper, she'd start to get, like, really bad diaper rashes and stuff. And so we ended up moving away and um, getting disposable diapers because of that. And we've intended to go back to cloth diapering many times. And it's just... It is much more convenient to be able to wrap something up and throw it away. It is expensive. It is not environmentally friendly. All of the things that you could say negative about diapers, but it is so much easier <laughs> to, to just throw that shit away and not have to worry about it. And to not have to worry that if we do go back to cloth diapering, maybe she's going to start having rash issues again. Yeah. Um, like, I think my thing was always just the, the laundry aspect of it. Like, you gotta i mean and, and i don't know so if i sound ignorant to anybody listening like i apologize but like having a, a poopy diaper like i'm assuming you wash most of it out in a sink i mean obviously you throw the the big pieces away you wash it out and then you just keep it there and wait for more like it just it's 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 unclean to me in the long run yeah so so what what most people do is they get a wet bag um and you basically have a wet bag uh like we just use a, a standard like kitchen trash can with a wet bag in it um but you just you know you, you rinse them off you throw them in the wet bag when they're like mostly because you know you can especially like once once kids get past that initial like very liquid uh stage 
um, most of the like physical particulate is going to wash out. Um, we got a, a, a bidet, like the spray nozzle style uh, bidet for our guest bathroom toilet um, so that we could specifically just spray them out into the toilet mm. and then just flush everything away. Made it super easy. Um, and then, you know, you rinse it out, throw it in the wet bag. At the end of the day, you dump the wet bag into the laundry, throw the whole wet bag in the laundry, run oh, it, okay. dry it, call it a day. So like I, I didn't know all that. I thought like you yeah. literally just had these these cloth divers sitting in now, a pile somewhere. I will say all of that thing that I just said is work that you don't have to do if you buy a pack of diapers at Costco and you throw one on your baby and you take it off and you throw it in the trash can. <laughs> but like it's not the the work the work is not that much more especially if you're not like it i i have some friends who tried cloth diapering and like way warned me off of it because they were like super uh shall we say fecal averse um where like if Wait, they smell just... fecal fecal averse averse to fecal not oh, a fan okay. of poop okay uh like, <laughs> how you said it was like fecal lovers like that's weird no no <laughs> hey man i'm not here to yuck anybody's yum but that is a yucky yum if it's your thing <laughs> <laughs> okay so continue i'm sorry uh no and like don't get me wrong like i don't like baby poop um but especially having a having a like breast milk fed kid like her her poops didn't really smell bad, especially when she was a baby. Like they were really earthy, but like they didn't smell like nasty. Right. And so like, I think my friends who were, who were warning me away from it were like opening up nasty, you know, dank smelling diapers and like almost throwing up, cleaning them. And we're like, no man, just wrap that shit up and throw it away. Like, don't <laughs> even like, you know? And so I, like, I get it. If you're, it, it takes a, it takes a certain kind of warrior to be able to fight that battle. But Diapers are just so much, uh, they, they just fill up landfills, man. And they're gnarly and there's chemicals in most of them that are against your kid's skin all day long and all kinds of gnarly stuff. So again, hippie that I am, like I, I'm, I'm big into the idea of uh, cloth diapering and reality check-in. I love the idea of cloth diapering and the convenience of disposable diapers was a necessary win for us because <laughs> we needed that fucking break yeah no so and i will say for for all the all the potty training parents like don't or the newborn parents who are just parents of babies like don't go cheap on diapers like yeah. do not i mean i get it there there are times and i've i've been there having having four kids of my own who've been through that stage like there are times when you need to buy the cheap diapers for emergency purposes just get but, a costco membership man I don't, I don't know, you know, <laughs> the, <talking> the, to. <laughs> like cost Kirkland diapers are great. They're some of the best in the market. They're low chemical, like EPA friendly. They're super cheap. They're cheaper than any other diapers that you'll get. They come in a giant fucking box, which is really intimidating. Except if you realize that you go through so many diapers that that giant fucking box is really convenient. Uh, and that Costco membership will pay for itself in how much you're saving on diapers in a year nonetheless all the other things that you'll get at costco and gas and all that other stuff we're not sponsored by costco but get a costco membership if you have a kid trust me this goes for you too derek weirdly doesn't I, have a costco membership no i apparently i have oh april has one but we don't go i don't know why uh but that's just you know, wasted savings my friend i, I yeah, apparently especially because i've got to buy gas all the time um <laughs> but you know this was this was going to be a short episode we knew it was going to be it, potty training is 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 one of those things that everybody has differing opinions and like we want to know what has worked for you what hasn't worked for you because there there are parents who want to know like do you want to give your kids candy and there are other parents who are like don't give your kids candy don't give them sweets don't xyz but like every kid just like every single one of us are are we learn by certain rewards. So like what has worked for you? What hasn't worked for you? What has worked for, you know, I want to know what works for you, Goody, when, when, when you, when y'all really hit that, that. Yeah. We'll have an update stage, video like, for sure. And then once, once Ivy gets potty trained too, like we'll see if the same thing that worked for, for Noah works for Ivy or worked work for Evelyn, worked for Ivy or for Noah, that kind of thing. So like, tell us what works, what doesn't work. 
not not for not only for us but for everybody else that's listening watching any of that yeah also uh let us know when you potty trained your kids because i'm always curious there's Mm, a that is a good one it's it's a wide gap man i we have friends who their kid was potty trained at uh before 18 months and i was like how like how wild uh i know other people whose kids were not potty trained until like kindergarten like five years old so Ooh. it's a it's a it's a wide gap man. that is a wide <laughs> like, gap like I, personally people, i feel like five is, is too late but like yeah you, you know social media has you believe in that six month old babies are potty trained so so like <laughs> like you said like, exactly what, what age do you feel is appropriate and what age have you done with your kids like i'm kind of curious what the earliest and what the latest is yeah so let us know. Um, our our social media links are are down below. We're at Proud of You Dads on Instagram, Twitter, uh, TikTok. You can uh, email us at proudofyoudads at gmail.com. Um, and uh, you know, if you're watching this on YouTube, comment down below, share this with your friends. Uh, we we really appreciate every every single one of you tuning in, um, listening to us, try to figure out how to body train our kids because we don't have all the answers, but uh, we're here figuring it out with you along the way. Um, so thanks. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, until next week, I'm Andrew Goody. And I'm Derek Mata. And we are proud of you. <laughs>